Hello. Let me show you how to have infinite amounts of sweet potatoes. Come join me in the chaos. All right, I've already planted a bunch of these, but I figured since I'm doing it, I might as well uh, make a little video out of it just so people know how to do this, just in case they don't. So um, in case you don't know, if you have sweet potatoes, they don't handle winters very well. Even in Arizona, you know, if you drop down to 32, then your sweet potatoes are going to die back. Um, mine didn't completely die back, but I had lost a lot of vines that I could have done this with. And so basically what I did is as I was harvesting some of my sweet potatoes, there was tons of vines that were at least 10, 20, 30 feet long. And so I did an experiment where I chopped them up into three node segments and just stuck them into water and kind of forgot about them. And I had a few cups just like this one where I put the cuttings in and, you know, I just checked them today and they're leafing out and temperatures are going to stay pretty high. So I'm going to start putting these in the ground. And I've already put a couple in the ground. I don't know if you can see that from there, but I put one here and I have another one here. And I'm going to be putting these in my yard. Um, and e this is an easy way to preserve these and have as many as you want. So... And that's all you do is you just chop up three node segments. And again, a node is a spot where there's a leaf. And you can usually tell if it's a good spot because you'll have little air roots. They're like these little bumps. They look like little pimples right below the uh, node. And those are spots that roots will quickly come out of that position if that spot is wet or underwater or under wet soil. <clears throat> and so I just look on the vine if I'm pruning back the vine after harvesting sweet potatoes and I look on look for spots on the vines that have these little bumps on them. And those are usually prime positions for harvesting slips. And you just take a bunch of these cuttings and as winter approaches, take a bunch of these cuttings, pop them in water, check on them probably once a week or so, change the water. And if you can make it through winter with them into spring, then you'll have a bunch of ready to go sweet potato slips so that you can get a jump start on the season. And once you put these in the soil, they'll explode with growth. They'll vine out pretty quick. And the only limit is how much sunlight they get. The more sunlight they get, the crazier they go. And the way I started these actually is I went to the local, uh, I went to the local grocery store and just picked out a few different types of sweet potatoes and left them outside in the crazy Arizona sun in cups of water. So I had the bottom half of them submerged in water just because I wanted to see which ones could bear 120 degree temperatures. And one of them particularly went nuts. And it's actually one that has um, an orange flesh type, which I thought are the prettiest because their leaves are kind of, they'll turn a little bit purplish once they get some soil nutrients. Like these are actually very green. And I know from this particular variety that that means that they're deprived of nutrients because when they're in the soil, they turn like a rich purplish, almost red color on the leaves. So like kind of like this leaf right here, you can kind of see that color there. So I'm gonna be um, sticking these in the ground. And a tool that I found that's really easy for this, I can't remember what this is called. I think I got it on Amazon. Um, oh yeah, Dig Dig. <laughs> I have no idea. I think this is um, from another country probably, judging by the name, but I love this thing. So very effective. And I'll do a little search and see if I can find the link to it if anyone's interested. But this is perfect for planting sweet potatoes and most other things. You can just do a quick little hole wiggle it around, shove the cutting in the ground, and then you're good to go. Um, let me see if I can find a spot for this. I keep uh, put them out of reach of my dog, just because my dog, for whatever reason, loves sweet potatoes. I know dogs are supposed to like meat and dog food and things like that, but my dog loves sweet potatoes. So if he smells them, he'll dig them up and eat them. So I put these little fenced in areas that I try to put stuff behind that I know he's going to want to chew up. But as you can see, this is a pretty, pretty good start. And I'm not sure what this type of sweet potato is called. I just know I got it at the grocery store. So hopefully there's no like intellectual property laws about you know, cloning sweet potatoes from the grocery store. If so, it wasn't me. Just kidding. All right, let's take a look here. Yeah, I think it falls under fair use anyway. Um, here's my carrot bed. I'm just going to put one on the edge of my carrot bed. So I kind of fluffed up the soil here. I tried growing carrots last year and the soil was so hard that they were just really stubby. And so I kind of worked in the soil, put a bunch of, um, organic material. I just basically, um, ground up some cardboard just to fluff up the soil. And then I added some perlite and things like that. So 
we'll see if the carrots do a little bit better. And then over here on this side where there's not as many carrots, I'm just going to poke a little hole in the ground. See how easy that is. The soil is pretty soft, so I'm not too concerned about that. And then these sweet potatoes are very good at punching holes in this clay soil. And then whenever you're doing this, especially with roots this big, you wanna be careful not to damage the roots, especially now that it's gonna be relying on soil. And if possible, I like to spread the roots out a little bit just so they have more surface area. I just realized you might not be able to have seen what I was doing. The good part about this one though, is you can see it has lots of, lots of little root starts. You can see these apical roots trying to come out of that stem right there. So once I encompass the stem and soil, it's gonna do a pretty good job at rooting out pretty well. Whenever you're transplanting something, you always wanna push out those air pockets. And then I'll, I'll water that in in a minute. To come out of focus. So that's the basic idea. You take those slips, stick them in the ground. I do a little bit more of what's called I call chaos gardening, where I just kind of stick these in random places. Some people will have like a monoculture area where they just plant a whole bunch of sweet potatoes, and that's fine too. I just like spreading them out. I found that that just makes my um, my yields better, and it also makes it kind of fun to be able to go around and almost forage for your um, stuff. It's fun to forget where you put stuff because I'll go out and put 10 more of these in random spots in the yard and I'll probably forget where they are until they start vining like crazy and then it's kind of like a Easter egg hunt I guess going around looking for all the sweet potatoes. It's kind of fun So hope this helps you to Grow more food in your backyard Thanks for watching